Hi, this is Swati Sila from the Software Testing Help Team. And today in this segment, we are going to learn all about unit testing. Now, unit testing is one of the most important phases of uh, testing types that happen in a software uh, process or, or when a certain software product is being developed. Now, let's take a look at, you know, where unit testing comes into picture. Now, um, once the code is built, so let's talk about the code building process for a little bit. Now, we know that all software projects are uh, based on teamwork. That means not one developer is going to build all of the code, which means units of code will be built and they will be put together to form a full comprehensive application under test or your final software product. Right? Now, even if we assume that there is just one uh, software developer for a particular project, it does not mean that this developer is going to build all the code at once. So hence, um, there's again going to be a method of developing code in terms of, you know, individual blocks or units and then going ahead and putting them all together. So for now, we have established that uh, a unit is the smallest and complete in its own sense piece of code that takes an input, does a certain amount of processing, whatever this lines of code is talking about, and produces an output for us. So the smallest part of a code that is in a workable situation can be referred to as a particular unit of code. And obviously, testing this piece of code will be, uh, you know, a unit testing process, correct? So we've established what unit testing is. Let's now go into a little bit more details about um, who does it, what does it involve, in which phase does it occur. So, okay, um, unit testing can occur any time a small, uh, you know, a basic unit of code is ready, right? So by ready, I mean it is already built, right? And then a, a formal review or a code walkthrough must have happened, which means um, there are no syntactic errors at this point. There might be like logic related errors, but syntactic errors are removed at this point. So for now, a basic block of code needs to be ready. It is 100% built and it is also reviewed or a code, walk, code walkthrough has happened so that all syntactic uh, you know, errors are removed and the code actually runs. Now, second thing. So this is about when, right? Now, talking about who. Who performs this unit testing? Since this involves taking a look at the code, right? This involves, uh, uh, you know, um, validating the code, uh, not just in the form of, you know, providing an input and um, not taking a look at the code at all and output. This middle part of the code, whatever we have, is not a black box for us. We are going to take a look at this code line by line, uh, statement by statement. Again, we'll come to all those techniques a little bit, you know, further. Uh, but all the line by line, you know, all the building blocks of the code have to be tested. In other words, validated, which means a good understanding of programming language uh, and, you know, the programming structure is a prerequisite to be able to perform unit testing. So that is why when we have to answer the who part of unit testing, this is mostly unit testers or developers. So our developers also moonlight as unit testers to finish to make sure that the basic building blocks of our code are correctly built. So we answered the when and the who. Now let's try to answer um, how, right? So we have established that it is a white box testing technique because it involves taking a look at the code and probably manipulation when you're trying to correct the mistakes that we, and, and, um, you know, uncovered. So it is a white box testing technique, which means, um, uh, and also it's a validation technique. So we are going to provide an input, take a look at the code, you know, thoroughly. A thorough examination of a code will happen. And eventually, when the output is produced, we are going to uh, evaluate whether this output is as expected or not. So this is basically how uh, unit testing happens. And with every form of testing, for unit testing as well, the basic underlying principle remains the same, which is 100% 
test coverage. So when we are testing any piece of software, anything at all, we want to make sure we test it 100%. We do not leave uh, any areas of the uh, application or any entity that we are testing untouched, right? So with unit testing as well, we are going to follow the exact same principle. Now how can we ensure that all the code gets tested? This is by choosing the correct input values. So we have established in the earlier step that um, Unit testing happens by providing an input, a thorough examination of the code and uh, obtaining an output. So input data that we are providing or you know uh, supplying to the basic unit of code is of key importance here and we want to make sure that uh, every bit of the code gets tested. So in the unit testing there are few uh, basic methods and these basic methods are um, so again, these are not basically methods, these are the type of, uh, uh, you know, the way in which unit testing is performed, the concepts that uh, become part of unit testing. For one, it is statement coverage, decision coverage, path coverage, and any other form of uh, coverage actually, Des uh, decision path, statement, again these are few example types of concepts that we have to think about. Let's say our code is that we accept an input value. So x let's say is a numeric data and I'm not following any particular programming language here, just giving an example. And let's say if there is a validation, if x is greater than let's say um, 0, which means it's a value higher than uh, 0, which is 1. Um, then let's say there is a message box that gets printed and with a message probably one if there's an else um, then the message box will print a zero and you know that's where the code ends now as you can see we have statements here we have different paths here this is path one this is path two and we have various decisions so x being greater than zero and x being greater than uh, I mean less than zero, right? So these are the two decisions. We have statements, we have different paths. So when you are choosing the input data, so to test this uh, you know, piece of code 100%, you will have to choose a, in, a, any uh, you know, numeric data. So that means you will have to provide a valid numeric input. So to test every particular statement, you have to provide at least one value for one numeric value as an input. Next, you will have to choose this x in a way that it is greater than zero to be able to test the first branch or you know the first decision and then you will have to choose a value that is less than zero to test the next decision and you know um, next uh, you know set of um, pieces of code that get executed uh, for the condition that x is equal, less than zero. So uh, this is just an example. So other concepts that come under unit testing are uh, in addition to statement, uh, decision, path, coverage, you would have a condition coverage, um, you would also have a branch coverage. So depending on whatever names you are choosing, uh, all of all these different techniques can be formed, uh, you know, can be used and all these different techniques are uh, part of your unit testing concepts. Now, do we have to, do you have to choose, you know, you, do, we ha do you have to perform all these, you know, assessments in a code? Probably uh, not necessarily. It depends on the code that you have on hand, the way it was written and, you know, the programming logic that it follows. But uh, unit testing also follows the 100% test coverage rule and to make sure that there is 100% test coverage, all these components come in handy and the choice of input data is very critical. So a quick recap, unit testing is nothing but testing of the basic blocks of code and uh, the reason why there is unit testing is that we want to eliminate errors or you know problems in the code early on and the best possible way to eliminate is as soon as the code gets created. So unit testing is uh, you know helps exactly that, remove the uh, problems at the code level it is a white box testing technique. It's still a validation, uh, you know, um, it's it's a still a validation technique. Um, it's performed by the developers and uh, unit testing results are sometimes shared with the QA team as well. 
this is because uh, this is sort of passing on the historical data of what went right, what did not go wrong, I mean what did go wrong and things like that. And another thing with unit testing is it could be done manually or there are automation tools like JUnit that can be used. Again, this is just one example. There are many other tools in the market that can be used to accomplish unit testing. So when is it performed? As soon as you have a block of code. Uh, what takes place here? Validating of the code, providing an input, uh, you know, checking the output, thoroughly analyzing the code, making sure that everything is covered, 100% test coverage is achieved. Uh, it is predominantly done by the developers. The results might be shared with the QA team if there is a need. Again, this is not a standard process, but is highly recommended. And this could be a manual testing process or it could be accomplished through JUnit. Um, well, that covers unit testing. Thank you so much.